the angular momentum of the electron is quantized. Angular momentum is given by mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi, where n can be 1, 2, 3 and so on. n is called principal quantum number. So first equation is mvr equal to nh by 2 pi. The second equation both agree that the electrostatic force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus provides the necessary centripetal force. The centripetal force is given by mv square upon r. This will become 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r square. This is centripetal force. This is the electrostatic force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus. We are talking only about hydrogen atom for the time being. So mv square by r becomes 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught e square by r square. This is centripetal force. And this is electrostatic force of attraction. Now, using these two basic equations, we can derive a number of equations. So we'll try to derive the equation for velocity and radius. So the steps are same whether a problem is there or whether this derivation is involved. So please try to understand the steps. First equation is MVR equal to NH by 2 pi. So from equation 1, V becomes NH by 2 pi MR. Now we substitute this in equation 2. So we get M by R V square, square of this. M square H square by 4 pi square m square r square. So mv square by r is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught e square by r square. Now we cancel out r square. We can cancel out 4. 1 pi will go. 1 m will also go. So we get the equation for radius. You take the radius that side, you will get radius equal to epsilon naught n square h square by pi m e square. This is the equation for radius. Radius becomes epsilon naught n square h square by pi m e square. multiples of h upon 2 pi and secondly the centripetal force 
is equal to the electrostatic force of attraction. Once you know velocity, we can get kinetic energy. So kinetic energy becomes half mv square. So we can put this V here and we will get the equation for energy which is me to the power 4 by 8 epsilon naught square m square h square. So try to memorize the equation for velocity, radius and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is me to the power 4 by 8 epsilon naught square n square h square. Once you know kinetic energy, you can get all the other forms of energy. Potential energy is equal to minus 2 times kinetic energy. And the total energy will be equal to minus of kinetic energy. This kind of relationship is valid whenever a particle moves in a circular orbit under the action of a force which obeys inverse square law. If a force obeys inverse square law, that is F is proportional to 1 by R square, like the electrostatic force or the gravitational force, and a body is moving in a circular orbit under the action of that force, then potential energy will be equal to minus 2k and total energy will be minus k. This is valid for motion of electron around nucleus and satellites around earth that we study in gravitation. In both the situations potential energy is equal to minus 2k, total energy equal to minus k. For a closed system potential energy and total energy will be negative. Kinetic energy is always positive. So k is positive, u is having higher magnitude and is negative and potential energy is equal to minus 2k and total energy is minus k. Now certain values also we should memorize. The radius of the first orbit of hydrogen is written as A0 that is 0 0.529 angstroms. So radius of the first orbit is 0 0.529 angstroms. The velocity of electron in the first orbit is 2.19 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second and that turns out to be the speed of light by 137. So C by 137 is the velocity of electron in the first orbit. So both the things you remember. The energy of electron in the first orbit of hydrogen is minus 13.6 electron volt. The radius of the orbits Rn is proportional to n square. We are talking only about hydrogen for the time being. So Rn is proportional to n square. As n increases, obviously the radius will increase. So Rn is proportional to n square. As n increases, the velocity decreases. So Vn is proportional to 1 by n and the energy in the nth orbit is proportional to 1 by n square. So if you look at energy E1 will be minus 13.6 electron volt. E2 will be minus 13.6 into 1 by 2 square. EV that comes out to be minus 3.4 electron volt. The energy in the third orbit is minus 13.6 into 1 by 3 square that is minus 1.51 electron volt. If you look at the energy in the fourth orbit minus 13.6 into 1 by 4 square that is minus 0 0.85 electron volt. The energy in the infinity orbit will be equal to 0.